afternoon, everybody. I would say it's nice to see you, but I can't actually see you. So I've been researching CCTV for some time, uh, mainly with Natural England and Woodland Trust. So I'm going to give a brief outline of the research I've carried out related to bats, plus a hint of what other species can be monitored in this way, and finish with a look at what the future might hold. So just to start with, just a very brief introduction to what CCTV equipment is. You have the camera, which is connected to a recorder and a monitor. And of course, you need to supply power to the camera. And that is one of the problems when you're wildlife monitoring, as most wildlife monitoring is, in areas without mains power. <clears throat> so on the right, you see, we have developed two plug and play portable kits, which help to um, get rid of that problem because you use them with batteries. So in 2016 and 17, uh, I carried out a study on a barber steel roost using a CCTV system, and it was time synchronized with bat recorders. And the ability to tie bat activity directly to bat behavior led to the discovery of the three calls. <clears throat> so this is the standard barber steel call. You don't always have both peaks. And this is approach echolocation and this occurred when the bats were actually approaching the roost which in this case was a tree and then we discovered swarming barbastel echolocation and this one actually shows from several bats with the approach it was a, a it was a fixed pattern but with the swarming it was a dynamic pattern and then finally we discovered a very high, high amplitude call <coughs> called um, barbastel honking which occurred during swarming and was really basically one bat seeing for another bat get out of the way. And that led to a scientific paper, which you can see at the bottom of the screen, which describes these calls and more about them. <clears throat> now this shows hopefully clearly uh, one of the videos obtained during the four month study. And here the barber stills are entering a roost in the Bobby Valley. <clears throat> now as a rule, it's much easier to count bats when returning to the roost rather than at emergence. And this particular case, um, it was a very puny tree that the Woodland Trust were not sure whether they should fell or not. So we decided we would monitor it for a few weeks to detect if there are any bats there. And although it was a very puny tree with a very thin crack, as you can see, it was being used by barbershop bats as a roost. <clears throat> and so the tree was actually retained. And we have also developed techniques for other species, which I just mentioned very briefly, and particularly with dormouse. We had a modified camera lid on a dormouse box, and there we could uh, film dormice in the wild without disturbance. <laughs> you can also monitor deer, badgers, etc. Birds, particularly raptors, have been monitored successfully using CCTV as well. Submersible cameras can be used in rock pools or to monitor fish in rivers. And I know that uh, many bat people, in fact, anyone interested in wildlife is interested in otters. And a submersible camera discovered this otter, which you have to blink. If you blink, you'll miss it. So I usually play it a couple of times <clears throat> so that people can see it. I have to say that was purely by accident. But um, also, In this particular video that shows that if, um, because the video can store seconds, several seconds before it's actually triggered using motion detection, if you have something such as a chill camera, they usually miss the first few seconds. But with CCTV, you have those few seconds before recording is triggered. It's very useful for fast moving species such as otters, though in this case, because the otter was being filmed climbing over rocks, then it moves much more slowly, so you get much more interesting videos. So in the future, and this is a general, not just for bats, but certain aspects of this do really apply particularly to bats. You can use CCTV over distance, several kilometers. And for example, the Wildlife Trust are monitoring raptors, which I can't say very much about over um, several kilometers and that worked very well last year. And what is very interesting is that now um, CCTV, because it is used mainly for security, there's a great deal of um, competition 
and so a lot of money goes into it. So now video analytics and smart search are being developed. That, that means you can look at the videos automatically using the recorder and they can select areas which are useful. For example, if a large object such as an otter enters a screen, then that is triggered. So you just search on those interesting triggers and not, not the whole of the video. Fuel cells can be used for power. I said one of the problems of monitoring for any length of time is that most places, particularly back roofs, are in the middle of nowhere without any power. So you can use solar panels, but you can also add fuel cells. So you can have power without having to go near it for very long periods, which is particularly useful for um, birds of prey and protected species. And also have been developed are thermal sensors together with CCTV infrared sensors. Now this means much easier to select a bat from something such as a moth flying by because they have a larger and a different heat signature. They're very expensive at the moment, but the price is coming down. Now, many people are interested in CCTV, but the techniques, sometimes the technology can be a bit defeating. So for this reason, uh, we are developing an online training course. Several groups will have it for general public, but we'll also have one specifically for conservationists. And I hope that uh, many batch workers will take an interest in using CCTV. So that's my very brief introduction. And now I'll hand over to Lily, who has done using CCTV for bat surveys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susan. I'll just um, set up my screen. Right, so um, a key part of our work in consultancy is carrying out surveys of potential building roosts. Um, this would be emergent surveys where a group of surveyors stand outside the buildings and um, just see if bats come out and if so, which species, how many of them, um, where they're coming from. Um, there's recently been increasing recognition in the industry that um, just using your eyesight alone isn't necessarily um, the best thing and from that a number of solutions have arisen uh, ranging anything from vintage so the uh, night vision camcorders to uh, very expensive high-tech thermal imagery um, so linked to that, um, through our work um, on the Barberstow and Woodland Trust um, project, um, Susan very kindly let us trial her CCTV setup um, to see how it works for commercial surveys like this. Um, so you can see from, from this setup here, um, it's pretty easy. If, if um, a trained person sets up the various um, settings and programming in the office, then it is basically just a case of plugging it all together and um, turning it on and pointing the camera at, at the uh, building that you want to look at. Um, so we've been using it um, to basically capture uh, the findings of our surveys, see if a bat is emerging or just passing by. Um, this is some footage from uh, monitoring of a lesser horseshoe roost. Uh, you can see the bats are light sampling at the roost entrance, uh, so it was quite useful to be able to have the footage to see how many actually emerged, particularly as with the naked eye that's quite a dark background, so it's quite hard to see uh, how many bats are coming out. Um, so it's particularly useful there. Um, and there's often a number of buildings like this one where the roost entrance is obscured. Uh, so again, um, this is slightly exaggerated, but the view of the surveyor versus the camera. And another feature was um, actually being able to mask out some movement if it wasn't the area you're interested in. So in that case, the leaves were masked out, so they, if they moved, they wouldn't trigger the motion detector. Um, so you can see here, um, it's nice quality footage. Um, obviously, as the technology improves, the quality is only going to get better. And as Susan mentioned, um, there's all sorts of different opportunities um, for different cameras and different technology. So um, you can see here, we, we used it to basically pinpoint the exact 
uh, tile where bats were re-emerging. Um, this is zoomed in, so uh, again, from with the naked eye, it was quite distant. Uh, we also tried it out on um, near the Great Horseshoe Bat Roost. Um, this is just upstream. We were trying to work out how many bats were coming from a cave. Um, and I mean, it was very confusing standing there with bats flying past up the river, going around the circles, coming out of the uh, caves. So again, the footage was very useful to work out what was happening at this site. Um, and the other application, which we haven't tried so much, is whether the CCTV could be used for activity transects, where we walk, walk around a field to see where, uh, where bats are using features. Um, so we actually took the um, camera on our BCT waterway survey. Uh, this is handheld, but you could just use a tripod. Um, and we were able to count the number of um, Dorbenton's passes without having to shine, shine a light on, on the waterway to keep seeing, oh, is it definitely uh, Dorbenton's passing? So um, one of the main things that we um, really found useful with the setup was the ability to um, use the masking feature on the motion capture and then also be able to choose between continuous uh, recording and motion capture. And even if there was continuous recording, if for some reason you thought it might not trigger for a bat, um, it, um, the system puts little markers in on that continuous recording to show where it has been triggered by some motion, which was really, really helpful for us to be able to go back um, on post-survey analysis and saved a lot of time there. That's it. Thank you very much.